What is up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Today I am back with a first impression, some swatches, a wear test, a trial of the new MAC 24 hour Studio Fix Smooth Wear Concealer. MAC recently expanded their Studio Fix line, so it's now going to include this concealer formula. They also expanded to 53 shades of the original foundation formula, and they also released two contour palettes, which I will not be playing with today, but I'm going to be testing and using over on Instagram for the rest of the week. Today, we are here to solely talk about the concealer, though. So this is called the Smooth Wear Concealer. There are 33 shades, 24-hour wear, which, okay. Can we talk about 24 hour wear feelings for a second? Because where are you wearing makeup for 24 hours and expecting it to stay on? Like what is your life situation that that's something that you need? I don't know anyone who regularly stays awake for 24 hours with their makeup on the whole time. However, we will wear test it for, I don't know, 11 or 12 hours because I think that's a normal amount of time to wear a concealer. 24 hours, dude, it just, it's not necessary. I like that they're making bold claims and that they're very confident in the wear time of their concealer, but like, I don't know, I just don't think you need that. And they also claim it has full coverage and natural finish, which sound lovely to me. I like concealer that's full coverage, but that's not really, really dewy looking or really, really matte. For me, a little bit too matte makes it look cakey and too dewy emphasizes texture and like dents underneath my eyes that I don't need everybody to know are there. And just like, you know, a whole bunch of stuff that doesn't need to be revealed is often revealed when you have a very dewy concealer. So a natural finish is my ideal finish for a concealer personally. After we do the swatches, after we try it on and after we do the wear test, I will take a second to kind of compare it verbally to some concealers that I have reviewed recently. So that way you guys can kind of compare and contrast if you've been looking for a new concealer. I also conducted the wear test yesterday, so I wore it without any powder. So today when I try it on, I'm gonna set it with a couple of different types of powder and see what works best on top of it as well. Woo, I am exhausted just explaining all of that. So let me wrap this up before we jump into it. Please do not forget to leave a like on this video if you don't mind taking a second to do that because I would super appreciate it. It really helps me out. Helps me know that you guys are enjoying this type of content, etc., etc. And if you are new here, please don't forget to subscribe because it would literally make my entire day. I cry little tears of joy into my pillow for every new subscriber. We have some fun stuff coming down the line, especially with Halloween coming. I'm just saying, it's gonna be a good time. Whew, okay, I think that's it. I think we're ready to start. Let's get right into the swatches. I'm just gonna go ahead and start concealing underneath my eyes. The color that I think matches me most closely right now is NW20. If I was going to spot conceal somewhere on my face, I would probably choose a shade darker. That's what I wore yesterday and it seems to work pretty well. 
This is the most bizarrely specific thing that I've ever probably going to say on this channel. The way that this concealer smells reminds me exactly of the paint that you use when you go to those ceramic painting parties when you're a little kid. You know when you go and like you pick a dinosaur and you paint it and then they bake it and at the end of the birthday party you get to bring it home? It smells exactly like that paint. I would imagine that's not an ideal smell, but it's like, kind of making me nostalgic and I kind of like it. I did apply it with a sponge when I did the wear test yesterday. This is actually probably a little bit light for my under eyes because I do still have some tanner on, even though it's getting more fall weather, you know, I, I just can't go full pale just yet. But since it's kind of like the under eye highlight thing, I was gonna roll with it. Once we put powder on, I think it'll be fine. So being that I did do a wear test yesterday and I don't have to do one today with this application, what I'm gonna do is set this with powder and I'm gonna use a different powder under each eye to see what works better with it. So I have a couple powders that I think will work really nicely with this, but why not try two so we can see what sits better. So my right eye, I'm going to use the Hourglass Translucent Veil and I'm just going to pat that over the concealer with a brush. And since this is a MAC product, it only seems appropriate to try it with MAC Patrick's powder. I'm just gonna clean off that same brush and tap that one under my left eye. Okay, at a distance, both of these look fine, but up close and personal, I think the Hourglass one looks much better than the Patrick's powder. This side looks a little heavier. Let me zoom in so you guys can see up close what I'm talking about. I feel like this side looks a lot lighter and more natural. And this side definitely has like a more heavy makeup -y look. I'm not sure if it's something that you're gonna be able to pick up on on camera, but I definitely see a huge difference in real life. The Patrick's powder is a little bit heavier and the Hourglass Veil powder is more skin-like for sure. Now that we've seen what this looks like applied and seen what it looks like with the setting powder, let's rewind to yesterday when I went about my whole day with this concealer underneath my eyes completely by itself. No setting powder, no setting spray, just out there in the elements with this powder living its best life. Let's see how it performed. All right, you guys, it's just after 1 p.m. I finished my makeup a few minutes ago, but the concealer and my foundation, I put those on around 12.30. So that's the time we are gonna start the wear test from today. I just realized right now, looking into the monitor, that I forgot to put on lipstick. So that's good that I saw this and, and, and realized. We're gonna go about our day, and I'm gonna check in with you guys a few times to let you know how it wears over the next few hours and into the wee hours of the evening, but I wanted to show you guys in natural light while it's freshly applied first. So far, I'm really impressed with how it's sitting. It looks very light and very natural, but it's giving me good coverage. I'm not really getting any creasing. It doesn't look too shiny. It's like a nice, like, satin finish, I would say. Even super up close on like the HD of the camera in this sunlight, I really, really like the way it's sitting. I think it looks super, super natural and very, very light on the skin. So me and my wet hair are gonna go out, eat some lunch, get some errands done, and I will check back in with you guys. I'm gonna say around like five or six tonight, and I'll let you know how this is looking after a few hours living my life. All right guys, it's 5.47 p.m. So I've been wearing this for a good few hours now. I figured I'd do a check-in after a few hours of wear but before we lose the natural light. I know I forgot that the last time I did some wear test check-ins. So this time, not today. Today, today we're remembering. So it's definitely settling into the fine line directly underneath my eyes, but everything else around the area is kind of still pretty much where I put it. There's definitely a little tiny bit of settling right there, just in like the finest, finest little line kind of areas. In general, from afar, it still looks nice. It's just when you get up like really, really close and look at the details, you can start to see that it is moving a little bit, which is fair because I didn't use any powder. I think that this plus the hourglass powder is going to be a beautiful combination. I don't know if I see this lasting 24 hours in and of itself, but so far it's wearing nicely. A couple things to keep in mind, it wasn't super hot today, it wasn't super humid, I did not work out. 
I did eat my first ever Chick-fil-A of all time, which was an excellent experience, but definitely not terribly hard on the makeup. So it hasn't been put through like a strenuous activity or anything, but it is sitting pretty nicely considering that we didn't set it at all. So, so far it's doing well, uh, but I'm curious to see what goes down over the next few hours because it's usually the second half of the wear test that's like, that's when the performance can like either make or break the review. So we will see. All right guys, it's 11.34 p.m. So we didn't quite make it to 12 hours of wear time, but all things considered, this held up extremely well with no powder and no setting spray over. I'm gonna zoom you in so you can see real close and personal, but honestly, it started to seep in and settle into my fine lines earlier in the day and I just kinda did, did one of those over it and ever since I did that, it's been pretty much perfect. You can still see a little bit of settling into a fine line right there, but I mean, for 11 hours, like really, that's not bad. So obviously I do these wear tests without powder and without setting spray because I don't want the powder and the setting spray to be the reason that something wears really well. Obviously though, I think that if you added powder and setting spray to this concealer, I think it would wear phenomenally. Um, after wearing it for a whole day, I think the concealer that I can compare it to most closely would probably be Urban Decay Naked Skin Concealer, which is definitely a compliment because that's one of my favorite concealers of all time. I was for some reason expecting this to be a little bit closer to MAC Pro Longwear Concealer, but I don't think it's quite as full coverage as Pro Longwear was or is. I don't even know if they still make Pro Longwear. It used to be a long time favorite of mine back in the day. But overall, all things considered, especially with no powder over it, I think this performed really, really well. It sat really nicely. And like, you know, I know you guys probably think like, oh, you look really young. You don't have any fine lines in your skin, but I do have quite a few fine lines underneath my eyes. There are plenty of places for things to settle. So if it doesn't, then I'm very happy for that. I just realized right now how jacked up my one nail is and I really don't understand why because I actually just painted my nails like two days ago, but uh, it's probably been looking disgusting this entire video and you've probably been judging me really harshly and um, please don't. So after using this concealer twice, wearing it all day yesterday with no powder, I'm swatching all of the colors. Uh, I, have, I have some thoughts. First of all, I absolutely love the finish of this concealer. I think it looks very natural. I think it sits very light on the skin. I think it has, like they described, a very natural finish. It is not too dewy, it is not too matte. It's right in this sweet Goldilocks zone that gives you a little bit more of like an airbrushed finish. I think that that's like, per, for me personally, I think that's the ideal place for a concealer to be as far as finish is concerned. Wearing it all day yesterday without any powder on top, I definitely did notice that it settled into my fine lines slightly. But considering that I literally didn't set it at all, it did very, very well. And I just tapped it out with my fingers. It went right back into place and kept wearing really well for the rest of the night. It was still present on my skin even after with I think we came to what, 11 hours last night. So considering that it wasn't set with anything, that's a pretty damn good wear test. Do I think it will last 24 hours? Hell no, absolutely not. That's bananas, no, there's no way. There's no but way. But like I said earlier, I literally can't imagine a circumstance where that would be necessary. So I don't think that really matters. As far as the coverage, ah, this I think as far as a concealer is concerned is, on the high end of medium coverage. I wouldn't have called this a full coverage concealer personally. It definitely wasn't like extremely, extremely high coverage or anything. I would say that it's definitely less coverage than Tarte Shape Tape. These retail for $21 US and $24 Canadian and you get 0.24 fluid ounces per concealer, which is a pretty good amount. The Urban Decay for comparison is 0.16 ounces and I do believe these are more expensive too. It's not massive the way the Too Faced concealer is, but it is bigger than the average concealer as well, I think. I think most concealers usually average around 0.16 ounces. 
Overall, if you are looking for a concealer that is very natural looking on the skin, but will provide medium to high coverage and above average wear time, um, I definitely think this one would be worth checking out. I really want to experiment too a little bit with highlighting or contouring with these because they do sit so natural and nice and light on the skin and they wear pretty well. I feel like they would be really, really nice for a cream contour. So I want to experiment with them like that as well. I'll let you guys know in the future how I feel about them for that type of application. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on this concealer. Is it something you're looking forward to? Is it something you're thinking about checking out? Do you wish that it was different in some way? Um, are you really hungry right now and you could totally go for a snack and you want me to know about it? Whatever it is that you have to say after watching this video, leave a comment down below. I would love to hear it. Please do not forget to leave a like on this video if you don't mind taking a second to do that because it really helps me out and I would super appreciate it. And also if you are new here, do not forget to subscribe because I would love to have you stick around for more videos. If you haven't gotten your Nicole fix for the day and you would like to keep in touch with me between videos, please go ahead and follow me on other social media. I'm at Miss Quinface on pretty much every platform, but I spend most of my time on Instagram. I post new looks there all week long. I post more editorial kind of creative lip art stuff over there and all of my behind the scenes PR unboxings, polls, uh, questions and answers, deciding what the next video is going to be. That all takes place on Instagram stories and I love it when you guys participate in that. So please come find me over there. Let me know you came from YouTube. That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this helpful and I will see you in the next one.